Technology does not change what photography is. It only makes it available to more people. Ken Van Sickle. Whew. Hey everybody, I wanna express my gratitude to you all for getting me over the thousand subscriber goal. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And by the way, I'm teaching a lighting studio session on January 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Philadelphia. The link is in the bio. Space is limited to about 20. I hope to see you there. With that being said, let's jump right in. So in the early 2000s, Lytro made a camera capable of refocusing images after they were taken. I remember seeing a demo of the camera and I was blown away by its sheer ability to shift between focus points. This camera was being dubbed as the future of photography. Unfortunately, it didn't catch on and the company had to shut down in 2018. But the tech, their tech, it went somewhere. Fast forward and I saw the iPhone 14 and 15 doing just that. It's possible that Lytro licensed out the light field technology that now allows users to change the focus point on smartphones. And today I wanted to explore Adobe's Lightroom since they've adapted something along those lines with their lens blur panel. And before I jump into the app, if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing. It helps me stay motivated more than you know. Thank you in advance. Let's jump into Lightroom. Lens blur is the 11th panel down. It's on an early access release from Adobe for feedback from users. Once you apply it, you're able to increase the blur amount by just sliding the slider. Next is the type of bokeh. You have five to choose from. Modern circular. The second is bubble. Third is five blade, commonly seen in vintage lenses. Fourth is ring, uh, single lens, lens reflex and mirrorless lenses. And lastly is cat eye, typically caused by optical vignetting on certain lenses. Below the bokeh is the boost option that allows you to add a glow to the bokeh or simply make it brighter. Most interesting for me is the focal range. This allows you to zero in on the area of the photos using a kind of depth map. This is kind of common in 3D programs. Once you tick the visualize option, it assigns a color on how the blur and focus areas are applied or affected. Lastly, it allows you to paint in your choice of focus or blur. Wow, this lens blur feature has a lot going for it. Before this, if you wanted that shallow depth of field, you needed a fast lens that opened wide, preferably on a large sensor. Something like this Sumerit at uh, 2.5 or, or this Nikon that opens up to 1.4. Before this feature in Lightroom, you had to pay for that look. But it's clear that lens blur is going to level the playing field and democratize the shallow depth of field allowing for even variable lens kits to have that look of a 1.4. The, the thing with variable lens kits is that they, they lack light. You, you always had to jack up your ISO or lower your shutter speed. But I'm not sure that that's going to matter for long because look at the performance of ISO. It just keeps getting better and better. Now, this whole thing, the only constant, the only constant in, in this is change, right? And this is all possible because of computational photography, which is at the heart of all of these changes. Computational photography, along with machine learning and what people are calling now AI, are drastically changing our industry, along with other industries. I mean, for example, take a look at these portraits that, for the lack of a better word, I created on a rainy day sitting at home with the help of Midjourney. These people, these locations, they're not real. I prompted them with some writing, like sending a text to a genie in a bottle or, or a scene out of the film Weird Science for all my 80s babies out there. We're living in some exciting times. And when I was growing up, progress happened gradually and it, and it took years. Now I wake up to some crazy news of some mind-blowing feature like almost every day. 
but i rather the tactile experience of a well-built lens and i prefer doing everything in camera and that's not going away for me i'm not much for cropping i'm glad that companies like leica exist with offerings like this m11 that honor the fundamentals of photography now with that being said i do keep an open mind to what's happening in tech some may say that it's all over and we need to find something else to do but i don't buy into that notion that mid journey or, or mid-journey is going to replace photographers and lens blur is going to replace the use of lenses. I don't believe that it's going to completely replace the need for a skilled on-location photographer. Some might say that lens blur is a negative, but I see it as another feature in our bag of tricks. Sure, computational photography will be another one of those things that we need to adjust to. No different than when we had to move from the darkroom to the, the light room but all jokes aside for many of us photography is our livelihood but it's not solely about the money if we can separate the two for a moment the camera this lens these tools are an extension of the way we create photography is a way of making sense of life it can be seen as therapy or as a meditation, certainly my drug of choice. Keith Major told me in a recent interview, the purpose of photography is to record life for the sake of posterity. I agree. I've seen a rise in mental health issues brought on by social media and among other things. But if you allow it, creating art and being part, uh, taking part in photography can be sort of a cure for some of us because it allows us to connect. If you believe that your clients hired you simply because you were good with the camera, I feel like you're missing the other part of the equation, the more important part. We're social creatures and we're primed for human connections. These clients hired you because of how you made them feel. So let us hang on and ride the wave of change. Standards like content authentication initiatives certainly are a step in the right direction. If you want more on the subject, um, check out my M11P video where I go more in depth. But in my opinion, human made will be the new luxury. So don't give up just yet. Let us not be so nihilistic about all this. Let us use these features to our advantage. We can buy back our time, save money on gear, and possibly provide clients with more sophisticated and engaging experience. But I'm curious, what do you make of lens blur and mid journey? Will they replace us? Is photography already dead? If you found this video interesting or remotely entertaining, consider giving it a like and maybe possibly subscribing. But until my next video, let's keep creating. Oh, and in case you missed it at the top of the video, I'll be teaching a studio lighting session on January 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Philadelphia. The link is in the bio. Hope to see you there. I know you're a superstar, a supernova shining, you can see from super far. And they ain't ready, know you're about to hit the throttle on them. Won't see it coming, you gon' come through like a supercar.